Welcome back to the woods, another episode of TA Outdoors, and this time I'm here with the new fire pit at the Saxon camp. I've got the thatch roof, Saxon house behind me, turf roof, Viking house over there, or Viking shelter, and this is the new fire pit which we started a couple of episodes back. Got a nice solid base now, concrete base, probably about four inches thick, and then on top of that I put sand and also the ash from the leftover fire pit just behind me. It was a risk really with that previous fire pit because I'm in a dense coniferous forest, there's pine needles everywhere, it's highly flammable material, especially on dry warm weather. So we needed to make something with a more permanent base and this is the end result, really pleased with it. It's possibly, I'll do the measurements in a minute, but I'd say about four feet long by a foot and a half to two feet wide. Uh, so it's much bigger than the last fire pit and the reason why we've made it so long is that we could move the coals to one side of the fire and just cook over one side while food might be cooling down or being prepped on the other side. So it allows us much more flexibility to be able to move things left and right and uh, distribute heat differently under various cooking, cooking items. Yeah, that's taken me most quite a bit of time actually, digging out and leveling all the stones. But super pleased with it. We're gonna put some edging on here, some smaller stones that are lower down just to create a bit of a lip so that any ash doesn't fall here onto the, the pine and uh, the, the kind of peaty soil that is flammable. Today's episode is all about cooking up a nice piece of fresh wood pigeon, uh, which I did catch, well I didn't catch, I shot the other day with my 12 ball. I went out shooting on a friend's farm. Uh, so I'm gonna roll on that footage in a minute, get the pigeon pet prepped, cook it up. I've got the Dutch oven. I'm also gonna fry some fresh wood pigeon breast as well. It's gonna be a good episode. I appreciate you joining me guys, and I hope you enjoy this episode. So what I'm doing is building up the fire with a piece of silver birch, a couple of pieces of silver birch. It's uh, fairly good, it, it is dead wood and it was dying, but it wasn't too rotten, I'll just show you the end. So this is a piece of wood I'm cooking with, as you can see the bark is starting to go and it tends to rot on the inside first, silver birch, so the bark looks fairly good. Uh, but I'm just looking there and uh, this part of the wood was fine. The top part, the part near the top of the tree was definitely starting to rot out, so I've been uh, bucking up pieces of this. But you can see it's getting slightly worse as we get down. So it's handy to have, and there it is, the fungi and rot at the bottom, so I won't be using that end. But this is all still usable. Actually what I'm doing is letting the fire build up really nice and hot, and then I'm going to use all the coals from these pieces of wood to cook on. Before I roll on the footage of getting the pigeon and the day of the day out shooting, uh, just going to fry up a quick bit of pigeon breast. And what I'm doing is, this is the Petromax Dutch oven, which I use regularly on the channel. This is the FT 4.5, so it's this, a sort of slightly smaller one. These little bits here are actually legs. So what you could do is you can flip the lid up, upside down. Those legs can either sit directly um, on the coals, which is what I'm gonna do, or they can lock into a grid. But either way, I'm gonna use the lid as a frying pan before I cook up the main dish in here. I see a lot of ants about, and that's because it's still quite warm weather and the, uh, the, the wood ants, southern wood ants are still everywhere. So this is going to be a really simple dish because that's how you should do pigeon breast. Don't complicate it. So this is some of the wood pigeon that I got. And the breast, I've left bits, little bits of skin and fat on there. But essentially I've got four pieces of pigeon breast. So really, I don't have any gloves, which is a bit stupid of me. So I'm just going to try and level it out there first. Just pop it on the edge. Let that, that shouldn't take too long to heat up. While I've got that, warming up on the fire. I've actually got the Dutch oven which has been hanging here for a while. That's also staying fairly warm just to get ready to cook up the main dish. Let's get some heat down the front there. Get 
Get those in. Look at them shrink as soon as they go in. You guys, I don't know if you guys can see that. Literally going to do five minutes. Just a, just a minute, minute or so on that side just to sear it and then I'll flip it. Add a bit of butter in a minute. How many times can I say a minute? Ding. There might be a bit of shot in this. There generally is with pigeon. <laughs> a lot of pigeon I've had tends to have shot in there. But yeah, you just crunch it on the teeth and then spit it out. Right, that's been two minutes, so flip. And now, add in a good knob of butter. Let that, as that's melting, sprinkle some garlic. So simple, we're gonna give this another three minutes on that side. It's a little bit uneven, the uh, plate. Now that's gonna, because it's cast iron, that's gonna still keep cooking. So just flip them again once more. They're a little bit, maybe too cooked, so I'll just let them sizzle there a minute. In fact, they're probably a bit too done, because it's cast iron. But you can really easily overcook a pigeon. Really easy. The sauce. Not all of it, just a little bit. Flip the board so it's on the clean side. And we'll just see. I reckon they're possibly a little bit too overcooked. Pardon the rusty knife, guys. The tongs to pin it. I prefer them more pink than that, personally but it's pretty hard over the fire to get it bang on right. So that's on the edge of being too cooked. There's just a little bit of pinkness to it, which is how you want pigeon. You want it definitely more rare than that. That's slightly overcooked. But you know what? It's going to taste good either way. It's not, not too bad. Like I say, slightly more rare is ideal, but you, on a fire, you're, gonna, you're a bit limited to the exact temperature. But that looks pretty good to me. It's the right, just the right amount of texture, I think. That's on the edge, on the limit of being too cooked. It's just about right, but it's not perfect. And the great thing about that garlic butter sauce is I can now use that in the main dish, which I'll cook up in a minute. So I'm gonna munch on these. While I do, I'm gonna roll on the shooting day that I had with my buddy James and how I caught these prepped them and things like that. Obviously, a uh, warning to those who are of a nervous disposition and you don't like your kind of, um, your graphic, it's not It's not so much graphic, it's, it's, it's catching your food in the wild. Uh, it's better than getting it wrapped in a supermarket, but I think it's good that everyone understands where their food comes from and to treat it with respect. So, you know, for those who are not into that sort of thing, maybe just skip ahead. Uh, but for those who are, let's play the footage of my day out shooting. On my mate's farm, I'm here with my friend James, who's an old school friend of mine. I've got the 12 ball with me, but we've been seeing them flying around. I'll pop a little weather box up somewhere so you guys can see what the stats are for today's conditions. From what I remember, it's mostly coming in from the north, the northwest, I think. And uh, yeah, they're flying in the distance, I can see them. Well, we got one. It took about an hour and a half. Missed a few to begin with. 
but yeah, finally got one, just hit. Probably just in the chest there from the looks of it, which is obviously in the meat that we want to eat, but you know, you, can't, you kind of can't pick and choose when it comes to using a shotgun. Check, cartridges, check, check, safety. And in we go. Feels good to be back in uh, back in Hampshire. My old stomping grounds, love it here. And uh, yeah, good to be out on the fields as well. Really good. Park the car, back to the hide. The wind's picked up. James is back as well. Hopefully we're gonna get a few more pigeon. They're coming fast. Oh. Yeah, you got him, you got him. Nice. Oh. Yeah, you got him, you got him. I can go down to those bales there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He went down. He went down. It's now quarter past five. Obviously we went out for most of the day before we came back, so. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a mismatch, miss, mish, mish, mismatch, mismatch of a day. We've not been here a full day, just a, just an hour or two. It is windy, you can hear the wind, it's great conditions, they're all over the place flying. I've moved over to this bale, this set of hay that's 20 yards further than James. There's the beans are eating. Yeah, look at that in the crop. Whoa, there we go. If I can get these feathers out of the way. Oops. There's the beans the pigeons are eating. They're being put down by the, the kind farmers for us. And unfortunately the pigeons absolutely love these. So yeah, we're we're kind of helping them out by reducing the amount of crop that the farmers lose. Pheasant season will be soon, October. That's around the corner. Been deep breasting this so the, the breastbone's just there. And I'm just this is not the right knife really to be doing it with. Because it the bevel's quite a, it kicks out the knife a bit so I don't I actually lose a bit of meat but it's all going to taste good. So, two nice pigeon breasts that I've kind of taken out, and then the whole pigeon breast section that maybe I'll maybe I'll roast. I might stuff it with something, stick it in a Dutch oven or something like that. There's there's not loads of meat on pigeon, which is why I tend to take off kind of a fillet of breast and just fry it. It's just fast. It's easy. You know, with a roast, it's still fiddly with all the bones and things like that. But I'm quite happy with that. We'll rinse them off. Um, we'll try and cook these in the woods for you guys, but yeah, appreciate you guys for coming along. Gonna get these back in the landy, get the gear in the landy, and then uh, yeah, we'll head off and try and go into the woods and get a nice meal cooked up.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I used to do that obviously quite a while ago on TA Outdoors, but I haven't featured that kind of content for a while now. Uh, but it's a it's a important part of what happens here in Britain. I think I should reiterate that um, you know those pigeon pigeon are classed as vermin here in the UK, and uh, we're actually trying to protect the farmers' crop because they do millions of pounds worth of damage every year um, on f destroying farmers' crops, be it beans, peas, corn, all sorts of things. Uh, they are actually a vermin. They're classed as vermin. So essentially, we're trying to help. I'm trying to help. Uh, the farm out and, and try and reduce the population to make it obviously more manageable because I think there's something like nearly six million breeding pairs of wood pigeon here in the UK uh, which is a lot and that they can if they're not controlled they can prove a very big problem to British farmers so that essentially that's the, the kind of core principle is that I'm not just going out there shooting it for the pot there is a reason behind doing it and um, obviously, rather than, than throw the carcass away, uh, it's, a, it's a tasty bird. It's, it's a good eating bird. So, And you can get them in restaurants and things like that for probably quite an expensive price. But yeah, that's. I just thought I'd reiterate that point to some of you. But we're back here in the woods. And this is the beauty of this fire pit. Let me show you. What I've done is the, the sauce from the lid of the, the Dutch oven there, I have kept here. So that's the garlic sauce because we're going to use that later. But yeah, essentially I moved all the coals over to the right. I've then got a new load of silver birch there to get some flame up and make some more coals and that way I can just manage the heat a little bit more in the pot but this is almost ready but it's just nice to have that extra space along the side to be able to move pots and pans keep them cold keep them warm and just adjust the heat so I'm really pleased with this really really pleased with this fire pit and it's a nice central feature in the camp now which is awesome as you can see there's ants everywhere crawling up me they're they're on their sort of peak time at the moment the ants so we've got a couple of carrots. These are all this veg that I'm going to put on this is fresh from my garden. So uh, you'll see some clips now of me harvesting the carrots. They're getting a bit big now because I've left them in the ground for a while. So that's a bit of a beast. That might taste a bit woody. That one is pretty much perfect size. So these are all kind of organic. They're from my my house. So we've got uh, let's put those that way. Two carrots of spuds. These are my second earlies. There, that's the spud sorted. We have an onion as well, which I started to grow from an onion set. Uh, so I've got a number of um, of onion as well. These are the kind of standard onions. Can't remember the name. Sturon, st 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 Sturon, is it or something? Anyway, that's nice and ready. That onion. Go away, Ant. Right, I'm going to leave the onion fairly chunky because it's more sort of for the flavour of the juices as opposed to to eat. Another cool thing from Petromats, little lid lifting tool. Handy given I forgot my glove. gloves. Right, okay, so let's get some oil in there. Okay, veggies in with some water. I'm uh, going to let that cook for maybe 20 minutes to soften, soften the veg a bit. And then I'm gonna add my bit of wood pigeon. So this is pretty much the crown. I, I've kind of done a mini mini uh, pigeon crown here. So I've taken off the, the front wings, back legs. You can usually leave them on, but I find there's not too much meat on them. There's the shot in the chest there. I might find that later, but yeah, clean out the cavity. That's just gonna sit on top of the, go away Ant, on top of the vegetables like that. And I'm going to give that maybe 20 minutes, just roasting nice and slow. And then that'll be ready. It doesn't take long at all. There's not much meat on it, so it's not going to take too long at all. Veg has been in there for 20 minutes. We'll give that another 20 with this, and we should be good to go. So in the cavity here, I'm going to put some thyme, fresh thyme, which I got from my house. Just wedge that in there. In fact, that's a bit stalky, that bottom bit. So just wedge that in there. And also... Don't want to check, is it? And a bit of butter in there as well, like that. So that's going to roast away in the cavity. And I'll season it with salt and pepper before I put it in. So that's then ready there. 
So the aim is to just sit that just on some spuds and carrots. There's quite a bit of water in there obviously. Normally I'd have that raised up, but I don't have that luxury at the moment. So there, sprigs of rosemary. That's ready to just roast away for 20 odd minutes. Just a bit of stock. And that can be used in the sauce as well. This is the leftover garlic butter that I had with the fried breast. So we're going to make a sauce with this and some 10 year old Taylor's port, which is lovely, gotta say. So, get the cork out. Already that's fairly thick. Hold it, and there's an ant. Sorry, buddy. Get some port in there. This is going to be a really nice sauce. I do have a stirring stick. Almost lost the port then. That would have ruined my day. Right, so I've got a bit of birch to stir here. Stir the stick. So I've got some flour to add to it if I need to thicken the sauce. You know what? Oh, look at that. That's looking good. I'm surprised the crown stayed up. Right, I'm going to add some port into this sauce as well. Put on the bird. We're done. Definitely think we're done there. Take this off. I'm going to pour a little bit in here. Where's the pigeon? Cheers for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's something a little bit different to the normal TA Outdoors stuff. It's a little bit more of what I used to do back in the day. Uh, it's been a lovely, peaceful afternoon here in the woods. I'm full, I'm stuffed full of pigeon and potatoes and carrots. Really nice meal. And actually quite, quite a simple dish, to be honest. It kind of cooks itself aside from the, the sauce part of it. That's where you kind of have to put a bit more attention into. But there's plenty of different ways to cook pigeon and I'm sure I'll include some of those uh, down the line but also everyone's taste is different so some of you may not enjoy the way that I cook that others will it's you know at the end of the day it's what I enjoy and uh, it was a tasty meal uh, we're getting towards autumn the beginning of autumn or the fall for you guys across the pond cannot wait for that part of the year really really looking forward to it we're starting to get the colder fresh mornings now which yeah it's just I just really enjoy that time of year. The, the autumn for me is the best time of year. It's great for camping. You camping guys have been really, really patient. I do appreciate that. So thank you for, for waiting around for the camping videos. I'm pleased with the fire pit. We've got the Saxon house window still to finish. We've got the new door to put on. There's loads more things that we're going to do to this camp, as well as the roundhouse thatching of the roof, which is a big job. And that's coming up soon. So thank you to all of you who tune in. I, you know, I really do appreciate it, guys. Those each and every one of you that stick by and watch me over the years, whether you're an old subscriber or a, or a newer subscriber, I do really appreciate all your support and for the likes, the comments, and obviously hitting the subscribe button. It's a, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you. 
And uh, yeah, stay safe out there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Mm -hmm.